everybody, welcome back to my Redstone for Blockade series where I teach you anything and everything on Redstone. Yes, I'm back, sort of, because, I mean, I've been a bit busy with school, guys, so a lot of tests coming up, and that's, you know, how it is, but I just saw, I finally got my butt and gear and made a video. Now, in this segment, we're going to be looking at D flip-flop and gated D latches, so let's get started. Um, okay, a D flip-flop or a data flip-flop sets the output to D, and by setting the output, I really should say the input, or it lets the output be controlled by this section here, which is D, okay? So, it doesn't mean, the wiki really confuses people if you have to, if you go by this. It says the output set to there, but it's not set. Like, the output will not be coming from here. The output is sent out down here. Um, I'm using pistons as usual as representation. And, basically, this is the clock in the sense of, if you had this set up to a uh, type of clock or, yeah, this is used, used mostly. This is used for saving data. A lot of times, this is especially used in like redstone computers and stuff like that. Uh, one second, let's make this daytime. There we go. And basically, let's just. I'll just show you how this works. Uh, okay. Now, as we can see right here, this is the clock here. Notice there when I do this, nothing happens here. That's because this is basically a clock. If there was a clock here, it would just be oscillating back and forth the whole time. Now, when the clock is on, this doesn't do anything. It won't let it have anything happen. However, if I turn the clock off here, it inverts that and does this. Now, if I do this, that in a sense, this is locking or saving the data in your loop. Now, if I just turn this off, nothing happens here. If you turn this off, if I put this off the inverts, but again, not change unless this is off here. Now, these switches here are basically little extra input that you would occasionally use. As I'm still trying to figure out this myself. I mean, I find Redstone PC sometimes very not well explained, and I'm hoping to eventually one day get around to making a really top notch tutorial on them. But until then, the basics. So, I mean, let it you do this on and off. But if this is on, this goes down the same thing here. But if they're both off, then they this won't do a thing. So this one actually has a lot more control about that. But anyway, um, yeah. So that's one design. And again, basically the data shifts over to another one. If you 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 would basically add a second, uh, uh, sorry, D flip flop into this circuit and that's what you would use for basically saving it's kind of like ram but a little bit different um here's a different layout similar or same thing though this one's a little buggy i think from this because that should not that business should not be quickly oscillating i think it might be just because this is an older design but again well nothing happens until you turn off the oh wait hold on I have one of these on by accident. There we go. See, now right here, this actually inverts it. And this is the, where the clock would be. So if I do this, again, nothing will happen. If I turn off the clock, nothing will happen until I turn it on again. So basically, the way these things work, I should say, tell you now, is it only changes when the clock input is transitions from off to on. So, see right there, it changed. So, let's just say, okay, I'm going to switch this uh, here. So, it went from off to on, and it changes. And then this will not do anything. It's updating, but because this is on, it stays like that. So, now if I do off to on, it inverts back again. So, yeah. If it's a negative edge, it's inverted in the sense this is a positive edge because it goes from off to on. Um, a flip-flop is said to be a triggered device, while a gated, there's a gated latch, which is a level trigger device, triggered on either as an aw, on, to aw, on or off clock enabled input. Um, the basic trigger level of a gated D latch uh, in design A, in this case, is um, it sets the output to D, or, or rather the input is controlled by D as long as the clock is set to off like we showed here. So again, this controls it. If it's on, nothing happens. Okay. 
Um, it just, uh, okay, now we're going to go here. You can often turn a gated D-Latch into a D-Flip-Flop by including an edge trigger. Design B has a positive edge trigger, which would be uh, right here as C. And again, it will only set it will set the output to D or the control I'll just call to D when the clock goes from off to on. So I'll show you one last time. Change this off to on, and it changes. This does nothing unless you change this and then on, and on again. Okay. Now we're gonna go to design uh, C here. Um. Let me actually let me hold on before I tell you that. Let me tell you these. These, like I said, they are called asynchronous. There are an S inputs which override the clock and force a certain output state. To get an isolated output, instead of uh, using the normal Q, which would be right around um, right here. Oh no, sorry, no, this is here. Uh, in order to get uh, an asynchronous, instead of using Q, it's just simply connected to an inverter. Okay. Now to design C, um, this is a one block wide version. And this one is actually quite, I've seen this a lot used in especially Red Snow computers because of its usage and it can easily be linked up across like this way. And if you're having a 16 bit or a shift register, you would just have these lined up in a column by column. And I, I've seen some, I saw one good video on that and I hopefully will get around to making a tutorial with those one day also. But back to this. Um, Except that this thing, this uses a non-inverted clock. It sets the output to D as long as, or the control to D as long as the clock is on and the torch, the torch here is off. So we just quickly go here. Um, these actually need a repeater in this case here. So I'm just gonna quickly put down a torch. Uh, let me just uh, let me uh, get this input over here so you can see what happens. Okay, so now, again, this will not do a thing until you do that. Change this on and off. That does nothing. But see here, even when I take this off, if this is off, again, it locks it into place. If I flip this off, then it goes off. So basically, your, dead, your data, in a sense, will come in from here and shift across every time a clock updates it. Now if it's off, nothing happens. If it's on, then something happens. And you, like I said, you would basically have this and then hook up to the next one and bring it along this way. Or if you're using a shift register, you line them up. And I'll get, th one day I'll show you guys that. But next, um, this design here is basically, uh, what is it? Bleh, sorry. Tripping on my words, I'm a little tired, but back to this. This one, the inputs are from basically right around. Yeah, okay, so this basically goes here. Um, whoops. Let me get rid of this Let's quickly. Uh, actually, hold on. Okay. So now, I'm going to show you again, there's nothing happening here unless, in this case, I turn this one on. Then it has control as to what it does. And the output in this case at this time is right. Let's just add this here. That's the output for this. So again, now that it's off, or sorry, on. This is on, which turns off this uh, this torch here. Because when this is off, this torch is on, which basically locks up the system or saves the data. Again, nothing happens until I turn it on. Take this off. Turn on. There you go. If I do this, nothing happens. It's on. If I do this. Has all basic, simple designs. This is um, this design here it provides a more compact version of A, and it basically this is if you actually change this here to a redstone torch, it gives it a high level uh, trigger. We add the pistons to this again. When this is in this case, when this one's off, nothing happens. I flip it, here, it inverts. So this turns on, it up. This is also somewhat uh, you can see the effects that's happening 
similar to I think what was it B, probably another uh, error, but this just changes back to the normal version. Now, in this case here, again nothing will happen. It updates. Oh, it's still doing it. Probably not fast enough, but um, it changes now. If I turn this on, nothing happens. But if I turn this off, there you go. Similar thing. Now, uh, lastly, guys, this design here holds its state while the clock is high, and switches to D when the clock falls low. The register repeater basically serves to synchronize the signals that switch out the loop and switch it into uh, D right over uh, blah, here. Okay, and it must be set to match one of the effect of a torch, so it can't be any longer here. Change this back to day, and again, nothing happens. Man, actually, sorry, no, something does happen because this is off. Nothing happens here. Changes on though, but again, nothing, nothing. Changes. Lock it. Change it. Turn it off. There you go. So when this is turns when this one turns off, then it changes there. Okay. And basically, guys, the data is basically can be shifted over. I'll show you guys that in an, when we get to more advanced stuff. For now, use these uh, designs to your liking. Um, I should have a second video up. Also, the this is the second video for today, and I'll be getting. I will try to keep on myself more to get more out there for you all. So stay tuned, hope you all enjoyed, and goodbye.